Well, um, thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, I'm Sarah Thompson. I'm one of the three curators of Japanese art at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. Uh, I will be talking to you today about a group of drawings by Hokusai and his students uh, at the museum. Um, many of these are currently on display in our exhibition, uh, Hokusai, Inspiration and Influence. The show is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's, it's an exhibition of works by Hokusai himself and many other artists who were influenced by him. Uh, there are over 300 works, uh, roughly divided into a third by Hokusai, a third by other Japanese artists during his lifetime from 1760 to 1849, and about a third by artists around the world from the 1850s right up to the present who were influenced by him. Now, all the examples that I have on uh, the screen right now are prints of various kinds, uh, three Japanese woodblock prints, uh, one French lithograph, uh, and a contemporary work uh, that is also by a Japanese artist, but it is actually a color Xerox made in 1999. Uh, and obviously uh, referring to Hokusai's most famous image uh, that has been nicknamed the Great Wave. Uh, however, there are many other kinds of works in the show. Um, in particular, the ukiyo-e artists, such as Hokusai, uh, typically did not only prints, uh, but also paintings, uh, one-of-a-kind paintings with the brush on, uh, on silk or sometimes paper, uh, and illustrations for woodblock printed books, uh, and then, of course, drawings uh, that were related to these works. So it's the drawings that I'll be focusing on today, um, looking not only at things in the show, but other works by Hokusai in the collection and, and his students. So these are some of the kinds of drawings uh, that we have. Um, it's, it's quite confusing to sort them out, but it's also very interesting to look at them and to study them gradually. Now, of course, what I, as a print specialist, am most interested in uh, is the drawings that are related to the production process for prints and printed books. Um, all of these uh, start with the artist's drawings, uh, but uh, in the Japanese uh, printing process, um, the drawings are all that the artist does. Uh, the artists do not actually make the prints themselves. Uh, the prints are mass-produced commercial products. The uh, blocks for printing are cut by professional block cutters, and then professional printers take over and use those blocks uh, to make the prints, uh, either black and white or color. The printed books are made by the same process as the prints. In terms of the artist's drawings, uh, there are basically two different kinds. Uh, there are the preliminary sketches when an artist is first getting the idea uh, for what he or occasionally she uh, will do uh, in the print or book illustration. So we have the sketches. And then um, when the final decisions are made um, and it's time to send something to the block cutter and then the printer, um, we have the final drawings. Um, in English, we tend to call them block-ready drawings. Uh, the Japanese term is hanshita-e. Uh, the underdrawings for the block. And those have to be very precise so that the block cutter knows exactly what lines to cut. And we'll look at some examples shortly. Um, then, of course, there are also preliminary sketches for paintings. Uh, once again, when the artist is thinking about what to do, then there may be drawings that the artist makes uh, just for fun or to stay in practice, um, just uh, for, uh, for himself. Um, I gave an example of Hokusai's uh, drawings of lions that he did one of every day for a certain period. Um, they're not in our collection, so I won't be showing them to you, but that's the kind of thing that artists would do just for themselves. And then uh, something we really focus on since we're talking about Hokusai's influence uh, in the exhibition, uh, drawings that were made uh, in connection with teaching, uh, passing on the tradition uh, from the teacher to the students. Um, the uh, traditional way of learning to draw or paint uh, throughout East Asia is for the teacher to make a drawing or painting. Um, ideally, the students watch and then they copy it. Uh, of course, they might also uh, copy older works uh, and eventually uh, they learn uh, the techniques and then they can do their own creations. Uh, so we have models for students to copy. 
Uh, we also have some drawings that explain uh, certain techniques. I'll show you some of those in a moment. And then, of course, we have the copies by the students. Uh, sometimes it can be difficult, especially if the student is a good one, uh, to know whether you're looking at a student's copy or at a sketch by the original artist. Uh, but if we look at these things carefully, we can start to sort them out. So here are two uh, works in our collection that are also in the exhibition. Uh, they are both um, generally accepted as being by Hokusai himself. And they are little drawings that he made for students to give them tips on how to do certain things. Um, over at the right, uh, you see a dancing figure. Uh, and Hokusai is explaining how you can draw these very lively figures and have them still look balanced. You maintain the center of gravity so they don't look as if they're about to fall over. Um, and you do that by uh, dropping an imaginary straight line from the head down to one foot or the other. It's very interesting to see where this drawing came from. Uh, it was a gift to us from Edward Sylvester Morse. Um, and he gave it to us in 1922 just a few years before his death in 1925. Now, Morse uh, was the first one of the Boston scholars to become interested in Japan, uh, to go there, to introduce uh, his friends to Japanese culture. Um, he is really, in some ways, the, uh, the founder of our uh, Japanese collection. Um, however, his own collection of Japanese art was ceramics. Uh, he accumulated a large uh, collection of ceramics in Japan in the 1870s and 80s, which he then sold to the museum in the 1890s. Um, and uh, along with it, he uh, had a position as the keeper of Japanese ceramics, uh, which he maintained for the rest of his life. But this little drawing is not part of his usual collection. It must have been a, a personal possession uh, that he did eventually give to us. The other drawing, uh, the, uh, the scene in the boat, is from the collection of William Sturgis Bigelow, who I'll talk about later, who was the biggest donor uh, to our, um, our Japanese collection, uh, and especially the prints. Uh, we have um, about 100,000 uh, Japanese objects today from many different donors, uh, but roughly about 40% of those are from Bigelow. And if you narrow it down to just uh, the uh, prints and uh, things related to prints, such as these drawings, um, then um, there are about uh, 50,000 uh, sheets of Japanese prints in the total collection, and about 30,000 of those are from Bigelow. So he was very important in the formation of our collection. At any rate, this drawing by Hokusai uh, is from Bigelow, given to us in 1911, and he, uh, it shows um, Michiren, uh, the founder of the Buddhist sect that Hokusai belonged to, um, and one of his miracles when he calms the waves by writing an invocation on the water. So there you see him doing it with the, uh, the sacred uh, words uh, written in red. Uh, and Hokusai is demonstrating to someone painting this scene how you make spray on the water. You have your brush loaded with white paint and you blow on it in little puffs. And so there he shows uh, someone blowing on a brush uh, with a sound effect, poop, poop, poop. Um, I think it's a self-portrait, but you can uh, draw your own conclusion. So these are examples of drawings made to explain things to students. Now, I mentioned the block-ready drawings and the differences between those and the preliminary sketches. So probably the most famous drawings by Hokusai in our collection, uh, which were already well known to the scholarly world when we acquired them in 1921, are these three drawings. Um, they're from the Spalding Collection. Uh, this was a wonderful gift in 1921 of um, over 6,000 uh, gorgeous prints plus a few drawings, uh, but they came with the stipulation that we were not allowed to exhibit them. Um, that basically is to protect them from light damage. Um, we do, however, uh, have, these <coughs> have these prints in the collection. Um, they can be shown to people who uh, wish to study them. Uh, they can be photographed and published and so on. And we have three uh, of the block-ready drawings, hanshitae in Japanese, uh, for Hokusai's last landscape series, uh, that is the illustrations of the famous anthology, 100 Poems by 100 Poets. Hokusai gave it the title, 100 Poems Explained by the Nurse, 
um, and he has uh, various scenes, uh, most of them present day scenes, um, that illustrate ideas uh, in the poems. So you can see these are very finished drawings, they're very precise. Um, there were only, obviously it was intended to be a set of 100 prints, but only 27 were published as full, um, complete color prints. Um, however, he did seem to be um, planning to do the whole thing. We think he did all of the drawings and 91 of the images are known in one form or another, a print, a drawing, um, in some, in a few cases, a photograph of, uh, of a, a drawing that has now disappeared. Um, but uh, we have three of the drawings for the prints that were not published. They're very precise. These would be used by the block cutter. Um, they would be glued face down uh, to a block of wood, usually cherry wood. Um, the paper is very thin, so you can see through it, especially when it's wet. Um, but if necessary, the block cutter might rub off a little bit of paper from the back um, so that you have just a thin layer and you can clearly see the ink lines. And gluing it to the block face down reverses it, uh, and then when you make prints from the block, they'll be reversed back again. Um, it includes everything, even the, uh, inscript the written inscriptions, that's all going to be carved by the block cutter. But uh, the block cutter has to have something very precise to work from. So that is uh, what the, uh, the block ready drawings, the Hanstae, look like. Now here's an example of the next stage. Um, there's a, a completed color print. Uh, on the right, and then what you see on the left uh, is also a print, uh, but it's what's known as a key block print, a kogozuri in Japanese. Uh, and that is what was made first based on the artist's drawing. So in this case, uh, the drawing went to the block cutter. Um, there was a drawing that looked just like this that no longer exists because it was glued to the block and the block cutter then cut through it using it as a pattern to make the block. Uh, then prints were taken from the block, um, and uh, we just happened to have one that by, by chance survived. Um, so it has the very precise outlines. It really looks exactly like the drawing that it was made from. Uh, then uh, a number of impressions uh, were made and used in turn to cut the color blocks. Um, there are a lot of questions about who decided what color was used uh, and so on, uh, but in order to make everything match perfectly, they would take some of these printed uh, key blocks uh, or key block impressions uh, and use those uh, in the same way that the original drawing was used to cut the color blocks. So basically, uh, you can, ha you can have um, a key block drawing that will only survive if the work, the print or book, was never published. So you can have either a published finished work, as we do in this case, or you can have that finished drawing, but not both. So this is an example of the, the process. Here is something very interesting from the MFA collection. It is two sets of what look like illustrated books, but in both cases, they are actually drawings. If you compare them, you can see that what we have on the left is the preliminary drawings, the shita'e. Um, we assume that these are by Hokusai. Um, and on the left, he's trying out uh, different positions, um, changing the figures a little bit, uh, sketching it. And it's very interesting because if you look carefully, there's a very a light ink sketch underneath. And then he did more precise drawing and darker ink uh, above it. So in a way, you've got uh, two or more drawings in one. And then on the right is a very finished, precise version. Uh, that is what would have gone uh, to the block cutter to be carved into the blocks if the book had ever been published. Uh, but since it wasn't published, uh, we have uh, the block-ready drawings are still in drawing form. And interestingly enough, since we also happen to have uh, the preliminary drawings, we can compare the two. Uh, one of the questions in Hokusai studies is uh, who did the block ready drawings? Um, and I know there's at least one major scholar who feels strongly uh, that Hokusai always did them himself. Um, other people feel that perhaps in at least some cases, Hokusai did the preliminary 
uh, drawings, but then other people uh, may have done the very finished uh, block ready uh, drawings. So this is something that we're still studying. Uh, these two examples, uh, we do not know where they came from. Uh, the most likely source is William Sturgis Bigelow, but we don't know for sure. Uh, the reason we don't know is that because they are in the form of books, um, they were previously cataloged by the museum as books and, uh, and not as works of art. So in the past, until about the 1990s, um, anything that looks like a book um, was considered to be a library research book and no distinction was made uh, between older uh, Japanese printed books um, or even uh, drawings that are bound like books, as you see in this case. Um, no distinction was made between these and the present day reference books um, that we uh, use uh, when we're studying and uh, researching. Um, beginning in the 90s, uh, we've started to sort out the, uh, the books and, uh, and re, uh, recatalog them as art objects. And that certainly has been done with these and with a number of printed books also. So, um, but the origins are a little bit mysterious. Even if we assume that it was Bigelow, um, he was a wonderful collector, but I'm sorry to say he did not keep careful records of uh, what he bought and when and where he bought it. And so sometimes we just have to guess. This is one example from um, what I think are probably our, what my favorite example, what I think are our very nicest the Hokusai drawings. And once again, it is a set of drawings. Um, we have three volumes, but that may not be the original uh, format. And once again, they are, they are very precise, very finished drawings for a book that was never published. If the book had been published, the drawings would no longer exist because they would have been used uh, to cut the blocks to print the book. Uh, but we do still have them in drawing form. Uh, once again, um, it was something that was previously classified as a book, and so we're not absolutely certain of where it came from, but uh, William Sturgis Bigelow, as usual, is, is the best bet when we don't know for sure. Um, now, these are very, uh, very exciting. Um, there are many, many different subjects. Um, I'll go on to the next slide and show you some other, uh, some other examples. Uh, those are deities of constellations uh, up at the top and then still more uh, floral designs at the bottom. Um, many uh, very wonderful designs. Uh, we actually published a facsimile edition uh, of these, um, and there is speculation. Um, the late uh, Nagata Seiji uh, thought that they uh, were uh, perhaps the drawings for a picture book that is mentioned um, in an advertisement back in 1823, uh, but that as far as we know was never made. So, Perhaps that's what this is, but still rather mysterious. Um, just to add to the excitement, um, still more of them were recently found. Uh, you may know about this, um, this wonderful uh, exhibition recently uh, at the British Museum uh, showing a set of drawings that they have acquired um, that seem to be from the very same set as ours. Um, so they're together. And they, those also have been published in this book, a very nice facsimile edition. Uh, so together, there are over 200 of these drawings. I suspect there may be still more of them uh, in other collections. Um, it looks as if there was a plan for a huge uh, pictorial encyclopedia. Uh, the British Museum drawings actually have a title that comes with them, uh, The Great Picture Book of Everything, uh, Bammotsu Ehon Daizen. Uh, the great picture book of everything. Um, so it looks as if Hokusai was planning a huge uh, picture book, and for some reason it was never published. Um, I almost wonder, especially after this discovery, whether the reason it was never published is that it would have been a huge uh, project, but we do at least have the drawings, which are very lively and very wonderful. Um, so I encourage you to uh, look into uh, both of these and keep an eye on what more we may find out. There are still a lot of questions, especially about the dating. Uh, could be anything from the 1820s to the 1840s, and you can make uh, make a case for uh, for various points in that date range. Um, and it may be that he worked on it for a long time and never quite finished it. Uh, so 
um, a very interesting thing that's, uh, that's currently being studied, uh, many different subjects. Now back to the MFA, um, what we are just now starting to look at, uh, even though we've, we've had it for well over a century, um, is a group of drawings that came from Bigelow. Um, there are some loose drawings, such as the one you see here. There are also drawings in albums. Um, and these are works uh, in the style of Hokusai, but most of them are pretty clearly not by him, but rather by pupils. Um, and uh, there's a, quite a wide range of um, ability or quality in the drawings. Uh, some of them are by better pupils, and some of them are by not so good pupils. Um, so um, that probably has something to do with why we never really studied them in detail before. Um, also, of course, because we have so much material here, uh, we really have been very busy. Uh, we only uh, we only really finished um, cataloging the prints in 2010, and actually, even in 2010, many of them just said Japanese print. Um, although at this point, they um, are mostly they mostly have full bilingual cataloging and are published online. So it's really not surprising uh, that we're only now getting to the drawings. And just recently, the third volume was published of a uh, study of our Japanese paintings. Um, so slowly, but I hope surely, uh, we're finding out what exactly we have. So um, there is a very interesting uh, little uh, comment made by Finalosa, our first curator of Japanese art back in the 1890s. And he said that when he and William Sturgis Bigelow were in Japan together back in the 80s, Bigelow had purchased the contents of the studio of uh, an elderly artist who, when he was young, had been a student of Hokusai. Uh, and this artist was named Hokusen. Um, that's Hoku meaning north, as in, as in Hokusai. Uh, and Sen, uh, for those of you who know Japanese, this is like Sen mean, it means a Taoist immortal. So the, the art name means the Taoist immortal of the north. Um, but uh, it was a very elegant name for, for someone who, frankly, judging by the things we have signed by him, was not a very good artist, really. Um, but um, through him, uh, we have gotten an enormous uh, quantity of drawings. Um, it's hard to say how many because some are loose and some are in albums, uh, but certainly hundreds of them, um, maybe thousands, but at least hundreds. At any rate, uh, this loose drawing uh, has uh, a pencil note on it that uh, confirms uh, what Finalosa said. Um, and you see there a close up of the note, which is you can barely see the pencil writing in the upper left corner. Um, but bought of Hokusai's last living pupil, Tokyo, spelled with an I, at 1885 to 6 Hokusai. And WSB, of course, is William Sturgis Bigelow. Um, so he thought that this was by Hokusai. Uh, we now think that it is by um, a, uh, a pupil. Um, it's, it's definitely Hokusai style, but really not quite as uh, well drawn as you would expect from him. Um, there is the second one uh, that came together with it. Um, these are fairly large, and my guess as to what they are is that they are designs uh, for banners uh, that would be printed on, on heavy cloth. Um, we have an example by Hokusai himself, uh, a really gorgeous a red a Shoki the Demon Queller um, that you see there, uh, complete with its, uh, its little hanging uh, tabs. It's a festival banner for the Boys' Day Festival on the fifth day of the fifth month. Um, and there's a Kiyonaga print from the 1790s that shows those banners uh, in use. Um, so you can imagine the uh, drawings uh, might have been uh, patterns for banners like that. Um, they both have to do with famous scenes um, about um, basically the wisdom of choosing your battles. Uh, both of them have to do with not rushing into fight um, immediately, but uh, kind of planning and thinking ahead. Um, so here uh, you see uh, Goro's uh, friend, Asahina, who is holding him back from rushing in uh, to, uh, to fight a battle that he would probably lose. Um, and the first one uh, showing uh, the uh, Chinese swordsman who's going to grow up to be a great general and eventually a king. Um, 
letting the uh, the bully have his way because if he wastes his time fighting with local scoundrels, he's not going to rise to power as he eventually does. So that is the uh, the um, um, motif that these have in common. Both of them are they're drawn in ink on paper, but then they have a very odd. Um, you can see it more clearly on this one. There is a red coloring on the back. Uh, tracing the lines, and I cannot, the only reason I can think of that they would put a red color on the back uh, is in order to transfer the image uh, to uh, something like a piece of heavy cloth to make a banner like that. So that's my best guess. So uh, according to the pencil note, uh, these drawings were uh, part of that, uh, that uh, hoard that uh, Bigelow bought from the former people of Hokusai. So there are our guys, uh, the four men who were the founders of the Japanese art collection at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Um, there is Morse on the left, the one who started it all, uh, who was actually a marine biologist who went to Japan to, uh, to study sea life um, and became interested in art. He collected, as I mentioned, ceramics uh, and was also the one who gave us that uh, charming little uh, drawing of the dancers. Um, there is Bigelow on the right. Um, in between are two very famous scholars, um, Ernest Vinalosa, our first uh, curator of Japanese art, who was at the MFA from 1890 to 1896. Um, he did an exhibition on Hokusai and his school in 1892 to 93, uh, which was the first uh, major uh, exhibition of Japanese, of any kind of Japanese art at an American museum with a catalog. Uh, then Okakura, uh, who is especially famous uh, in Japan as the great champion of traditional art during the uh, time of modernization. Uh, and he also uh, later came to Boston, uh, was a curator here from 1910 until his death in 1913. So a uh, very important uh, people here. Um, interestingly, of these four men, um, the only one who really liked Ukiyo-e Prince was Bigelow. Uh, the uh, the others, um, Morse was interested in ceramics. Um, Okokura and Finalosa liked older art. And at least at first, they looked down on ukiyo-e because it was the, the vulgar art of the commoners. Uh, but Bigelow, who had lived in France in the 1870s, uh, had been uh, bitten by the Japonisme uh, bug. And he loved ukiyo-e prints, uh, just as French did. He bought lots and lots of them. Um, and he was the one who really had the, uh, the big money. Uh, they all collected, but Bigelow collected the most of all. Uh, there he is. Uh, you see him as a young man in Japan on the left, dressed as a Buddhist pilgrim. He did actually convert to Buddhism, as did Finalosa. Uh, and then in later years as a distinguished trustee of the MFA. And there is a 1917 portrait by John Singer Sargent. Uh, showing Bigelow proudly displaying the Order of the Rising Sun that he received for his, from the Japanese government for his services to Japanese culture. And the uh, sergeant portrait is in the current exhibition, uh, since most of the works by Hokusai in the show came from Bigelow. Uh, just to show you the range of his collection, uh, all of these works uh, came from uh, the Bigelow collection, uh, sculpture, paintings, um, of course, prints, also textiles, lacquer, no mask, arms and armor, he collected everything, um, including drawings, even relatively humble things. Um, so here is something that was just so fun, I uh, had to put it in the show. Uh, it's another thing that uh, was thought to be by Hokusai, but looking at it, we really uh, think it's probably by a pupil. Uh, but there is uh, an inscription on it uh, saying that it belonged to someone named Fukagawa Hokusen. Um, so uh, that is, uh, that is uh, the person that Bigelow supposedly bought all of these drawings from. It's uh, supposed to be a design for a folding screen. If that was a full-size folding screen, about six feet tall, and actually it would have been a pair of them, this is a very large snake. Um, so we don't know if it was ever actually made into a screen or not, and why someone wanted a giant snake. Uh, but you can speculate about the possibilities. Were they born in the year of the snake? Were they devotees of the goddess Benzaiten, who's, uh, who, uh, whose animal is the snake? Um, there are various possibilities. Maybe they wanted to fantasize uh, 
being a uh, a samurai hero such as you see in uh, many prints who fights a giant snake but there is the snake now this is another uh, drawing that we found most of the drawings as i mentioned are uh, by pupils um and not all that great though they're interesting this however appears to be by hokusai himself this is very exciting um so there you see a drawing by hokusai it is a preliminary drawing for a book illustration. Um, and we actually have the book, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, it's from the life of the Buddha. So it's uh, set in ancient India. Uh, the Buddha lived in India, in, rough, in northern India, in roughly about uh, 500 BCE. Um, so Hokusai is using his imagination uh, to show what he thinks it might look like. Um, that's a scene in which... Um, a, a wealthy friend of the Buddha purchases uh, someone else's large uh, large uh, garden and park, and it becomes the location of an early Buddhist temple. But the really important thing here is the preface. Um, there is a handwritten preface uh, by a student of Hokusai named Hokuga, and it tells the story of <clears throat> excuse me um, how Hokuga obtained uh, these drawings, which he says are by Hokusai, and we can believe it. Um, so uh, it, he explains that they were living together uh, in the Fukugawa area in 1834, um, and Hokusai was there for about a year, and then it says Hokusai decided to move because too many people had found out where he lived. Um, so I don't know if this is people that, uh, that he owed money to that he wanted to avoid, uh, or uh, whether it was people who were pestering him to do work for, for them that he really didn't want to do, unwanted unwanted commissions or creditors or both. Um, at any rate, for whatever reason, Hokusai decided to move again. And uh, when he was uh, clearing out his house in order to move, he gave a number of drawings to his student Hokuga. Um, so Hokuga actually says that, <clears throat> that Hokusai gave him over 100 drawings so in that case, uh, there, there might be more little uh, little albums like this one out there. But at any rate, uh, we know where these came from. Um, as I'll show you in a moment, there is a connection between Hokuga and Hokusen. We don't exactly know how that happened. Uh, possibly Hokusen, the one that Bigelow um, acquired the things from, uh, possibly Hokusen started out as a student of Hokuga and then later on took a few lessons from Hokusai. And this is actually quite a common situation. Um, it, I can easily imagine that Hokusen was studying under Hokuga. And after a while, Hokuga said to him, well, now that you're more advanced, you should take some lessons from my teacher, Great Master Hokusai. Um, so that's very possible. Um, but we can imagine these drawings going uh, from Hokusai uh, to Hokuga, as described in the preface, then from Hokuga to Hokusen, to Bigelow, to the MFA. So it's very exciting that we have at least a tentative possible chain of provenance from Hokusai all the way to us. Now, I mentioned that this is a, a preliminary sketch for a book illustration, and we have the book. Um, there is the relevant page from The a Life of the Buddha, um, which interestingly was published in 1839. Um, even though um, Hokusai already had done the drawing sometime earlier um, in maybe 1834, 35, um, and then he did not need this preliminary drawing anymore um, and gave it to his student Hokuga. Um, and yet the book was not published until 1839. Um, so uh, there were a lot of delays in uh, publishing in the mid 1830s because there was an economic uh, depression in Japan. Um, that was the time when the Hundred Poets series was discontinued. Um, it was also uh, also probably had something to do with the delay in publication of the third volume of Hokusai's famous picture book, 100 Views of Mount Fuji. Um, but this too uh, seems to have been delayed, uh, but um, already uh, back in 1835, um, the uh, the uh, block-ready drawing for the book must have been completed. Possibly even the blocks had been carved. We don't really know. Um, so between this preliminary drawing that you see on the left and the printed book illustration that you see on the right, 
there would have been an important stage in between the block ready drawing. Um, that's the very, the very precise drawing um, with all of Hokusai's little, uh, little changes and afterthoughts cleaned up. Uh, and that block ready drawing would have been used as the pattern to cut the blocks to print the book. And you see things like um, on the left, Hokusai is thinking about exactly what shape he's going to make the top of the gates, how many elephants he's going to show going in, um, and things of that kind. Uh, but then it would, would all have been cleaned up in the block ready drawing, and that is what the book illustration would have been made from. Um, I also found among the miscellaneous sketches by frankly not so good uh, pupils, um, an album of sketches by someone named Narui Sadao. We have no idea who he was. Uh, possibly he was a student of Hokusen. Um, but among these sketches uh, is one uh, of this very scene. Uh, but if you look carefully, you can see it is based on the printed book uh, rather than on the drawing by Hokusai. Um, why do I say that? Uh, because of the shape of the gate building. Um, it's not, frankly, a very good drawing, and we would not uh, be exhibiting it, uh, but I wanted to show an example of how uh, printed books could also be used uh, for students to copy from, um, even um, sometime after the, uh, the master uh, Hokusai uh, had himself passed on. Now, this is another uh, example uh, on the right of one of the uh, mysterious um, books of sketches uh, in our collection. Uh, this one actually has a date, it's 1855, so Hokusai has been dead for six years. Uh, and the album of sketches is unsigned, um, so it's, uh, we, don't, and we aren't certain uh, who did it, but to judge by the style of the drawings, the most likely candidate is that artist Hokuga, uh, the one who was living with Hokusai back in 1834, 20 years earlier. Um, and I picked this, uh, this page uh, with uh, notes of uh, detailed descriptions of how to draw a tiger um, that seems to be based on a tiger painting by Hokusai. Um, and we have a tiger painting by Hokuga uh, in our collection. Um, we don't know the, uh, the exact uh, date of the tiger painting. Um, it's, it's not dated, but it is signed. Um, so uh, clearly Hokugai is learning from Hokusai how to paint tigers. The other interesting thing about uh, these uh, color, these albums of color sketches with instructions for how to do it, um, and we actually have two of them um, dated, uh, with, uh, dated 1854 and 55, Hokuga himself, by the way, died in 1856. Um, so uh, this is a late a work of his. But they have titles. Um, they're not signed, but they have dates and titles. Uh, and the title on the two uh, color albums is Saishikitsu, um, uh, all about painting in color. Um, or I, I've also translated it sometimes as knowledge of color. Um, and interestingly enough, this is the same title as a printed book uh, that was published by Hokusai very late in his life. Um, the second volume came out in 1848. He died in 1849. And it is instruction, it is instructions for how to paint. Um, and you there happily there is now an English translation of it available. Um, so I recommend uh, to you uh, Yoko Matsuba's uh, recent book, Mad About Painting, uh, which contains a translation of various things uh, by Hokusai. Uh, conveniently including this. So um, there's been speculation that Hokuga may have worked with Hokusai uh, when Hokusai was preparing uh, the book Saishikitsu. Uh, perhaps Hokuga himself uh, in these albums that he did uh, after Hokusai's death was hoping to continue uh, the work and publish more uh, information on how to paint, uh, but we will have to study these in greater detail and see what we can figure out. Now, I mentioned that there's a connection of some kind between Hokuga and Hokusen, uh, and here is uh, what I was thinking of uh, in yet another album of black and white uh, sketches. Um, here is an example that you see on the left that is signed by Hokusen um, with uh, another name, um, um, Manjisai, 
um, that's uh, an art name, um, the, uh, the studio of the character for 10,000. Um, so uh, he signs himself Manji Sai Katsushika Hokusen. Uh, and you'll notice the uh, design is exactly the same or almost the same as uh, the design of a painting in our collection, which is signed by Hokuga. Um, when uh, the painting came into the collection, um, no one really knew uh, what it depicted. There's no inscription to tell us what it is. Uh, and someone made up the title, A Young Samurai Punishing a Scoundrel. Um, if you look at the picture, you can figure out pretty clearly what's going on. You have this very elegant looking, a well-dressed young man. Um, you, you know that you know that he's he's basically still a teenager because his uh, his uh, hair is not completely shaven. Um, but he has the the long hair. He has the elegant clothes. Uh, you know he's a samurai because he has two swords. So he goes out for a walk on this lovely moonlight night, uh, and some character thinks he uh, he looks like an easy mark uh, and tries to mug him. My private title for this painting is the thwarted mugging. Um, so this character comes and tries to attack him, but the young man is such a, such a fine martial artist uh, that he easily can defeat this guy just by grabbing his hand and bending it painfully backward. Um, so I think that's what's going on. Now, interestingly enough, in the drawing, which is signed by Hokusen, um, it gives the name of this character, Kamakura Gengoro Kagemasa. So that's good to know, uh, but it only helps us up to a point. Uh, Kamakura Gengoro Kagemasa is um, the name of a historical person who may or may not have been a, a real person, uh, but he is um, often um, shown in Kabuki as the hero of the Shibaraku scene. Um, so this is a very famous uh, scene in Kabuki where um, a, a hero with a very spectacular costume uh, it has great big sleeves that always remind me of a superhero's cape. Um, and he comes comes out and tells the villain uh, Shibaraku, which means wait a minute, and foils all the villain's evil plans. Um, so that's who this character is in Kabuki. But this is obviously a completely different story. Um, and I wonder if it's something like a scene from an Edo period uh, novel uh, that hasn't been identified yet. So one interesting little problem. Uh, but then there is the question of the connection between the two artists. So uh, Hokuga is definitely active earlier than Hokusen. I uh, remember he's the one living with uh, living with Hokusai in 1834, um, whereas um, Hokusen dies in 1885 or 86. Um, and I, it's a little bit hazy and we don't have good records, but I think probably Bigelow bought things from him before his death and then bought the contents of the studio from his estate after he died. That's my best guess. So um, that's really a generation later than Hokuga. But as I suggested, possibly he was Hokuga's student and then later studied a bit uh, with Hokusai. So is Hokusen's drawing copied from Hokuga? Were they both copying something by Hokusai? It's certainly Hokusai's style. Um, so once again, uh, questions for further study. Now, uh, one of the most interesting uh, questions also for further study uh, is uh, Hokusai's family and the artists uh, in his own family. Uh, the most famous among them is his third daughter. Um, her art name was Katsushika Oi. I'm going to skip ahead to my, oops, to my next slide. We have a beautiful, beautiful painting by her uh, that you may have seen before. Uh, women playing music. Um, and then also in the present uh, exhibition, I put in a printed book illustration uh, by her. This is the color frontispiece. Book illustrations were usually black and white, uh, but sometimes there would be very, very special editions might have color pictures. Uh, and in this case, there is just the, the color uh, scene uh, at the front. So they both show different types of women, obviously something she's very interested in as a female artist. Uh, so uh, women artists in Edo period Japan were rare but not unknown. There were just a few of them. And usually they were family members of prominent male artists because that was the only way that they could get the training. So um, Katsushika Oi could not have done what her father did, uh, which was at the age of 19, 
walk into the studio of a major artist and say, I'd like to work for you. Um, but uh, she could uh, work for her father and was trained by her father, um, became a very good artist uh, in her own right. Um, she was the, uh, the third daughter, um, the youngest of his five children, or at least um, the youngest who survived to adulthood. Uh, some sources say there was another child who, uh, who died young. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this is uh, Katsushika Oi. That's her formal art name. Um, her informal everyday name is Oe, or uh, in this case, she signed Ajo. So among these drawings that we're just now uh, looking at and going through, uh, we found some that are signed by her. Um, and I particularly like the sumo wrestling mice. Uh, I think they're very charming. And then interestingly enough, uh, we found a small, uh, an album of small color paintings, including uh, this uh, scene of sumo wrestling mice, uh, which pretty clearly comes from part of her drawing. But interestingly enough, even though the, uh, the color sketch there uh, is, I think, intended to be a finished painting, it can be difficult in Asian art to know where to draw the line between, to draw the line, so to speak, uh, between drawings and paintings. Um, you can't just say if it's, if it's in ink, it's a drawing. If it's in color, it's a painting. It doesn't work that way uh, because there are very finished uh, ink drawings. Um, but I would say uh, what, uh, what uh, OA did here um, is a kind of a preliminary uh, sketch. And then this color painting, I think, is intended to be finished. However, um, really, it's not nearly as well drawn as her little sketch. If you look at the faces of the mice, they're not nearly as, uh, as uh, expressive and mouse-like as, uh, as hers are. Um, now, the album of drawings is signed on the very last page. This, this page is not signed, but the last page is, and is uh, Manjisai Isho. We don't know who Manjisai Isho was. But Manjisai is uh, one of the uh, alternate names that was also used by Hokusen. So I wonder whether Isho and Hokusen are the same person, because very often artists did use uh, different uh, names. Uh, Hokusai himself is supposed to have used 30 different names. Um, and often uh, artists had more than one name. Sometimes they used them at the same time, uh, sometimes separately. So I'm guessing that possibly Isho uh, may have been the same person as Hokusen. So does that mean that he was a student of uh, Katsushika Oi as well as her father and possibly Hokuga? Um, did he find her work and copy it later on? Did they both copy Hokusai? There, as usual, are, uh, are many different possibilities, um, but definitely there is some kind of a relationship here uh, that we need to look at further. But there, there is um, and that beautiful painting uh, and the uh, book by Oi. Now, as I said, she was the third daughter. Um, there were two sons and three daughters. Uh, and um, we don't have any record of the sons showing any interest in a drawing or painting. Uh, but supposedly all three of the daughters um, painted at least sometimes, um, although it's the third one who became uh, well known as a painter. We do have something very interesting in our collection, um, and that is the little album that you see on the uh, on the right. I'm I dither over whether to call these small color pictures drawings or paintings. I think I would call them paintings. They could have been mounted as small hanging scrolls, um, and they look just like the three that you see at the left, uh, which are mounted as small hanging scrolls. Um, originally, they were all mounted together as one hanging scroll. Uh, we've now, for the exhibition, remounted them, and they're now three separate scrolls. Now, there are various signatures uh, on these, um, on these um, small paintings. Um, and once again, uh, I don't know for certain uh, whether these are different artists or whether possibly, at least in some cases, they are different signatures of one artist. But the artist Jofu, um, who uh, you see um, on the right side of uh, both of these uh, groups of pictures, um, is identified in the title of the little album. Uh, there is a, a title slip handwritten and glued to the cover of the small album on the right. Uh, and that title is 
uh, the picture album of Hokusai's oldest daughter, Jofu. So uh, in theory, um, some of these paintings are by her. And I wonder whether some of the other unidentified names may, by, may be by her also. Now, what we know about the oldest daughter uh, was that her everyday name was Omio, uh, and she was married to and subsequently divorced from uh, Hokusai student Yanagawa Shigenobu, uh, who was one of his uh, better and more successful uh, students, um, I think would probably have been designated as Hokusai's um, artistic heir uh, if the divorce had not occurred. Um, but uh, Omio was the mother uh, of um, a, uh, a, uh, another family member who, who caused all kinds of problems for his grandfather. Uh, her son uh, was the bad grandson whose, uh, whose activities uh, basically bankrupted Hokusai. Um, one of the uh, things that people always ask about Hokusai is whether uh, he made money from his activities as an artist. And the answer is yes, he did at first. Um, he uh, was uh, pretty well off um, in the 1810s as a result of the success of his uh, picture book series, uh, the Hokusai Manga, which we translate as Hokusai Sketchbooks. But then all kinds of bad things happened um, in the 1820s. Um, his, uh, his, uh, wife, his wife died, and he had been widowed once before already, but his second wife died. Um, he was very ill. Um, one of his, one, the middle daughter died and the other two daughters were divorced. So things were kind of coming apart at the seams in his uh, family. Um, he eventually did, uh, he recovered from his own illness. Um, this, this was the point probably uh, at which his uh, third daughter moved in with him and looked after him for the next 20 years for the rest of his life. Uh, but uh, his oldest daughter was divorced. Uh, and uh, her son, who by now was an adult, unfortunately was an irresponsible adult, uh, caused, got into some kind of trouble that Hokusai had to bail him out of. And we don't know what it was exactly, but it was terribly expensive. And uh, we know because Hokusai complained in letters to his publishers, my grandson is in trouble again. I'm going to have to spend a lot of money again. Um, and the best guess as to what the grandson was getting into is gambling, but we really don't know. Um, at any rate, uh, so I look at these lovely paintings and I wonder, um, you know, if that is signed by Joe Fu, who was actually Omiya, Omio, excuse me, um, the, uh, the little scene on the left of the woman holding the baby who's reaching up to the willow tree. Is she thinking of herself and her little son who turned out to be uh, such a problem for the family? Uh, well, we don't really know. So yet another topic to be further, um, to be further researched. One of my favorite things in the show um, is uh, this album with many uh, small designs pasted into it. Um, the pictures that you see are actually on thinner paper that's been uh, pasted into um, the bound album. And uh, it, we guess that it's by Hokusai. Uh, it's so intricate and detailed. Uh, it uh, is not quite like anything else that he ever did, uh, but it does really look like uh, his style. Uh, and these appear to be designs for some kind of craft or decorative artwork, but we don't know what. Uh, there are lots of possibilities. Um, it could be for lacquer, um, something like the flat pattern uh, that you see on the far left with the Tengu, the winged bird demons. Um, that could be even, even possibly a textile or, uh, or a decorative paper pattern. Uh, these things could be for lacquer, um, for uh, leather tobacco pouches. Um, there are all kinds of possibilities, but wonderful, intricate, uh, detailed designs, a whole book of them. And then some other little pictures have been pasted in around the margins. Uh, some of these are probably by Hokusai also, uh, but others uh, may be by, mis well, others definitely are by miscellaneous people. And a few of them are not even um, uh, Katsushika uh, style at all, but uh, Utagawa school style. So. Uh, possibly the album was passed through different hands and other people uh, pasted things in it. We don't really know. Um, here are uh, some more examples. So I would really love to know uh, what these, uh, these patterns are for. Um, if you look at the photo on the right, uh, the, uh, the image on the left in three parts, 
it looks as if it was it is a pattern for something like a little wallet that you would uh, fold over into threes and then perhaps glue the edges so that you could keep things uh, inside it. Um, but I'm not sure uh, exactly what's going on there. Uh, the designs are so interesting. Many of them are clearly intended to be seen uh, from more than one direction, from up and down, uh, sometimes even from four different directions. Um, there are a lot of scenes, uh, not only of uh, Japanese images, but of of um, imaginary scenes of uh, China and India, you see elephants and so on, um, which is something that Hokusai loved to draw. He was uh, he was very good at that sort of thing, and I think quite proud of his ability. So I'm very interested in uh, what these uh, these images were intended for, and maybe we'll be able to find out. Finally, just a couple of things that are not uh, in the exhibition. Um, but that we are, uh, are uh, interested in uh, continuing to uh, research. Um, we have a number of things by this artist Isai, Katsushita Isai. Um, he's one of the very good uh, pupils of Hokusai, uh, so good that uh, there is sometimes confusion between his work and Hokusai's work. Um, and in fact, the drawings that are now in the British Museum were at one time attributed to this artist. Um, which was uh, not unreasonable, although we do now think that they're actually by Hokusai himself. So this is a, a manuscript book. It is hand-drawn, but it looks very finished. So it doesn't really look like, you know, preliminary sketches for a printed book. I wonder whether possibly it was uh, intended uh, as a manuscript book. And one of the interesting things in Edo period Japan is that uh, print, printed book culture and manuscript book culture uh, do uh, coexist. Um, so uh, printing does not totally replace uh, manuscript books, although those become uh, special luxury items. So I wonder, um, again, uh, more research on Isai, and this is just one example of uh, things that we have in our collection. Um, and finally, um, something that I considered putting in the show, uh, but I decided not to uh, because it's just a little too uh, far away from Hokusai. Um, we have a large group of loose drawings. Well, when I say large, uh, there are specifically 38 of these drawings. Um, they're uh, about a foot tall or a little taller, um, and they show a very lively scenes of fishing boats in action. Um, I particularly like the one that you see on this slide at the lower left, uh, where very large fish, I think they're tuna, are, are kind of poking their heads up as they're, as they're captured in the nets. Um, and they really are almost as expressive as the human figures, uh, which are themselves very lively and expressive. Uh, I like these drawings uh, very much. I wondered whether they might be by a pupil of Hokusai. Um, however, um, it seems that the most likely explanation is that they are just a bit later. Uh, they are probably from the Meiji era, uh, so there's some influence uh, from him, uh, but it's a little too late uh, probably to be by an actual pupil. Um, and it seems likely that what we have here is the designs for an emaki, a picture scroll. The, you can see some of the designs are cut off, and I'm just showing you a detail because they were too big for the for the copy stand that I was using when I shot these uh, informal uh, photographs. Um, they're rather long, and they seem to have been intended for a large, spectacular picture scroll. Uh, and we know that things of that kind were being made um, at the, uh, in the uh, Meiji era in the uh, 1880s and 90s, um, and uh, typically as special uh, display uh, display uh, projects uh, for the industrial exhibitions that were being carried out in different parts of Japan at that time, uh, and they would have been uh, intended to show different kinds of fishing that are being carried out in a certain region, and basically to show off at the at the fair uh, celebrating the products of that region. So that's the most likely explanation uh, for what these are, and once again. Maybe we'll be able to find out more about them in the future. So here is just a, a list 
of uh, some of the things that we uh, that we want to uh, work on further that I'd like to find out more about. I definitely would like to find uh, out more about Hokuga, um, his uh, connection with Hokusai. Uh, they were living together. Um, and then uh, that uh, album that seems to be related to the Hokusai book uh, on the use of color, the Saishikitsu. Um, so something to investigate there. Um, Hokusen himself, uh, again, even though he's not a terrific artist, he's very interesting because of all his connections. The artists in Hokusai's family, um, people are becoming very interested in Nakatsushika Oi, who is the really good one, uh, but it would be nice to know more about the others, more about the family situation. Uh, the album that I just showed you uh, with the unusual designs, um, what are those for? What is it related to? Uh, the artist Isai, uh, the uh, fishing drawings, and something that I uh, did not show you because I don't have any photographs of them, um, included with these drawings that I've been showing you, uh, we have uh, quite a lot of architectural drawings. Um, I'm not sure whether those uh, were part of the, uh, the group that Bigelow bought from Hokusen or not. Um, Hokusai did do some architectural drawings, so they might be. It's possible. Um, or, uh, again, uh, it's possible that over the past um, century and more, um, our various Japanese drawings got kind of jumbled together, and those may perhaps have come from another source. But I would love to have someone come in who knows something about architectural drawings and can tell us whether there's a Hokusai connection there or not. Um, so uh, let us know. Uh, if you're interested in these, and we look forward to uh, continuing the research uh, with scholars in uh, various places around the world, uh, in Japan, in Britain, and elsewhere. Thank you.